<clears throat> well, good morning, YouTube. I thought I'd just do a little live stream for people that were beginning to paint or that want to paint. And uh, this live chat during the day is just especially for you. If you've got questions about painting or what you need to start painting or any kind of help in that area, definitely leave comments down below. Subscribe, like, share. Especially share it with your friends or other people that are artists that uh, you know that would like to start painting. And we'll see if we can help them along. I know there's a lot of people out there that would like to start painting, and are, it's mostly fear, which is the reason that they don't. Or they say, well, I can't draw a straight line, I can't make a circle, I can't, uh, I have no talent. Well, I'll be the first to tell you, you don't need talent to paint. I really am a firm believer in people being able to paint without talent. Yes, there are people out there that have extraordinary talents for painting. But I think I think in everybody, there's the talent to paint. It's just the matter of having the, the desire to follow through with that want, that desire to paint. That's the real talent. Having the desire to paint is talent. So if you want to paint, that's what you do. You just go ahead and paint. And it's a learning process for everyone, whether you've got talent or not. You still have to learn. And that's the, the biggest key ingredient right there is the, the learning and the patience and practice. I'm not going to kid you. It takes practice. Practicing is what it's all about. You will, Every time you paint a picture, you will learn something. I've been painting for over 40 years. I still learn things most every time I paint. And that's something that people really need to understand that uh, you will learn as you go. It's just like any other hobby, whether you learn, whether you're a woman that likes to crochet or wants to learn how to knit or something like that or do scrapbooks or whatever, you learn as you go. You do. Scrapbooks, great example. You don't have to be a talented person to make a scrapbook. You just sit down, you figure out what you want to put into it, and you go for it. It's the same with painting. You figure out first, what do I want to paint? Do I want to paint landscapes? Do I want to paint portraits? Do I want to do both? Do I want to do still life, flowers? Animals, whatever you want to paint, you just sit down and, and decide what it is you'd like to paint. That's the key ingredient right there. Figure out what you want to paint and then get started. And frankly, I'll tell most people, one of the best places to start, even if you want to do portraits, is to start with landscapes. Why landscapes? Well, in some ways, they're easier than portraits or even still life uh, because it's such a learning ability that you get from doing landscapes because you're doing many different things. You're doing water, trees, mountains, fences, buildings, barns, whatever you want to paint. And you learn from doing that and... It's, it's a very good way to learn what the different brushes do, the difference between the brushes. Um, it's just as important as learning your colors, mixing your colors, and um, using the brushes the way you want them to be used. Um, not everybody uses the same brush for the same thing. It's whatever you're comfortable with. You can do trees with a flat brush. You can do trees with a fan brush. You can do trees with a, a three-inch brush. 
You can do trees with a knife. There's so many things you can do trees with. This is what you're going to be more comfortable with and what really applies to the painting that you're doing. Sometimes you may do trees with a fan brush, depending on the tree. Sometimes you may want to do trees with a flat brush. You may want to use a liner brush. Those are all very important key things to learn. And learning what those brushes will do, that's where the talent is right there. Learning, your, learning the brushes, the strokes, learning how to make those strokes, how to mix the colors, when to use a medium, when not to use a medium, when to use some thinner, to thin it down, and when not to. How to prepare your canvas. Some people prefer a canvas board. You don't need to prepare the canvas for canvas board. What I mean by preparing the canvas is making sure the canvas is tight. When you buy a standard stock canvas, a lot of times they don't come very tight. You can tap them and they feel kind of loose and well, there's things you can do, like spray the back of them with water. Canvas shrinks. Just spread, spray it with a light mist all on the back and move your hand around. I've actually got a video on how to do that. And just keep tapping it like a drum. You'll tell the difference in the sound. As it gets tighter, it'll sound different. It'll just get tighter and tighter, and you'll feel the difference. If you don't want to fool with regular canvas, you can use a canvas board. There's nothing to do but put it up on your easel and start painting. Learn how to use gesso. If you're going to do that's for acrylic. In fact, you can use gesso for oil. Make sure it's dry first. Learning other things. You can do multimedia. And it's not unusual for people that want to do landscapes to use acrylic first. And that's called a block end. A block end doesn't have to be a total representation of exactly what you want. It's just roughly what you want. Basically, you could throw a little bit of color in for the sky, block in areas of where you want to put a mountain, even clouds, trees, and they don't have to be exact, not even close. Just roughly where you want to place things. Put in some water, a stream, a brook, or whatever you want where you want grass to be, you know, the approximate tones of the grass don't have to be exact because you're going over it with oil anyway, so it doesn't matter. As long as you're somewhere in that ballpark, green for grass. You know, you may want to use some different shades, add some yellow to it here and there. Learning that further back it is, the lighter the colors normally. When you get closer, your colors turn more vivid and clearer, and they're a lot stronger. Those are things that you learn from practice and just doing it. Same with the sky. Skies tend to be darker on the top, and they work their way down to a lighter color. When you get down to the water, it tends to be darker than the sky. So certain little basic things are good things to learn for people. And those all help. I didn't get that kind of help when I started painting. I just didn't have it. YouTube wasn't around. There's a few books here and there. You know, of course, you had uh, Bill Alexander on TV and Buck Polson and then finally Bob Ross. And, you know, that was for the for wet on wet. But if I wanted to go with more traditional painting, then it came to using books. Books that they helped, but they did not really give a great example of how to really do everything. You know, they tried to steer you in the right way, but they didn't always do that. Some books were better than others. Some books try to even teach you how to mix the paint. 
the best way to mix paint is to do it. You're going to waste some paint, buy some cheap paint, and use it to start learning how to mix paint and mix colors. And you'll also learn that different companies' colors may vary. You know, Bob Ross, Sap Green may not match, say, uh, Windsor & Newton's Sap Green. If you put them side by side, they may not be exactly the same. There's different pigments, different amounts of oil, and uh, other chemicals that are in them. It's hard to uh, say they're all the same because they're really not. They're usually in the same ballpark, but they're not exactly the same. So if you remember that when you do a painting, if you're doing an extended painting, uh, painting in such a tradi traditional painting that may be working on for a month, you need to remember which paints you're using because otherwise you can change the, the tones and the color by switching brands. It doesn't always have an adverse effect or anything, but you know you want to try to stick with the same brand you're using. Now I use different brands of paint myself, and there's a lot of good brands of paint out there. Um, hard to say which one's better than the others. You know, it's just there are some definitely better than others, but try to stick with a decent grade of paint. Uh, Windsor and Newton's great, a great paint all around, whether it's acrylic or oil. Bob Ross paint is actually good paint, especially if you're doing wet on wet, which is what he promotes and what William Alexander promotes. But William Alexander has his own paints too, and they're, they're not really quite the same. You can compare them, but they won't be quite the same. Brushes. Brushes is probably one of the most important tools you can have with painting. The better the brushes are, the better you will paint. If you go to an art store and you buy a package of brushes, of say a dozen brushes, for $5, that's what you're going to get, $5 brushes. They're not going to last very long. You're going to be very upset because the brushes are going to fall apart. And next thing you know, you're picking off little pieces of hair off your painting. And they do not hold up well. And normally they don't work very well when you're using them. So get the best brushes you can afford. And there's a lot of good companies out there with brushes. Rosemary brushes are excellent. They're over in England. They're not really that pricey. It's the shipping the shipping is what really gets me. Is that the shipping usually costs a bit, but um, Wins, uh, so your Windsor and Newton has their own brushes. Rembrandt has their own brushes. Uh, Master Craft or something like that. They got some good brushes. There's a lot of good brushes out there. Usually, you can tell by the price. If they're pricey, they're usually pretty good brushes. Get good liner brushes. And yes, look at the liner brushes because they'll start from zero. Actually, I think there's a zero, zero one. Of one, two, three. You may want a variety of them depending on how big of a line you want to draw. And that's what liner brush does. It's for drawing lines of very tiny little areas that you, that you want to paint. Or a detail or a detail brush. Same with flat brushes. You don't want just one. You're going to want something maybe starting, you know, eighth of an inch, quarter inch, three quarter inch, one inch. Get a variety of them. Um, an oval type of a brush, an oval brush. Same thing, smaller to bigger. You know, at least get a few different sizes from smaller to bigger to get started with. And how big of a painting do you want to do? 
comes to mind if you know if you're going to do small paintings, you only need smaller brushes. An eight by ten doesn't require any real big brushes. Neither does an eleven by fourteen. When you jump up to a bigger size, like a sixteen by twenty, then you'll be wearing some bigger brushes. If you go up to eighteen by twenty-four, definitely will be using bigger brushes, or twenty-four by thirty-six. Keep in mind, you know, the bigger the painting, the more detail you can put in. And actually, a lot of times it's a lot easier to have more detail with a bigger canvas. I mean, think about it. If you're drawing a really tiny little object on an 8x10, it's going to be a lot more difficult doing that than if you're doing it on a 18 by 24 the object's going to be bigger, so you have a lot more opportunity to make better details. I always have the question from a lot of people about Bob Ross and Bill Alexander, Buck Paulson, lots of other ones, especially beginners. They're like... Do I want to start with wet on wet? Truthfully, if, if I wasn't doing these classes, now I probably wouldn't do much wet on wet anymore. I did them for many, many years. But, and I hadn't really intended to teach wet on wet until I finally realized that it's really a great place to start. Why? Because... It's like the reason that's the reason that Alexander and, and Bob Ross taught it was because it was a, a very quick way to get started, a very quick way to get you to learn the brush strokes, using how to use a brush, the different colors, how to do some color mixing, backgrounds, doing mountains, using a knife many different facets of the painting can be started there fairly easily and then grow from there. I don't, I don't say that you can't continue doing wet on wet, but it's a great foundation to get, at least get started because you can get a, an end result that's very satisfying with a not very many tries. A lot of times the first painting you do, you may surprise yourself and find that you've done a, a nice job on a painting, especially for a very beginner. Once you progress and get better and better at the wet on wet, then you will be open to the challenge of doing more traditional painting. You've already got some background in, in how to use the brushes, the mediums, the canvas. Um getting some coordination with your hands, your eye-hand coordination, things of that nature. And then you'll be able to transfer that knowledge over to more traditional painting to help you get started with even harder painting or more complex painting. That may take you a lot longer to paint. And it just makes it a lot more satisfying to get started. And you can still use the same paint. You don't lose anything. You can use the same brushes. Now, frankly, if you're doing traditional paintings, you probably won't be using, you know, the Bob Ross type brushes that, you know, like a, a two-inch brush or one-inch brush. Um, the foliage brushes. Some of those you won't be using. But you'll definitely be using the fan brushes, the liner brushes, and flat brushes, and, and things of that nature without a doubt. And you still may use some of the bigger ones too, you know, even if it's just to put down um, a base coat of, uh, you, you may still want to use magic white in the background, even if you're doing traditional painting, very possible. But keep in, keep in mind that you should always have an open mind about learning things. Uh, Use acrylic. 
acrylic's not very expensive really unless you use the pro version that's it gets pretty pricey but doing a doing a background which is the block in on an oil painting is a great way to start i i i started doing that a number of years ago myself and i never used to but i found after uh training with michael james smith for a year and uh, attending his school online that it's a very effective way to get started on traditional painting. Just blocking in where you want things to be with acrylic, knowing that you can change any any of that with by going over it with oil is a great thing. But at least you get to visually see approximately what you would like to paint. And know you don't need all that detail, you don't need a ton of detail or anything like that. It's just a matter of getting the colors where you want them on the palette. Excuse me. Well, I don't know if we're going to get anybody in here today or not. I'm hoping that we get some uh, people to come in, but uh, I'm not seeing anybody as of yet. I'm still going to post this video, though, for people that are beginner painters to watch it. There's a lot of how-to things in my paintings. It tells you how to prepare your canvases, clean your brushes, how to maintain your brushes, soften them, keep them in like new condition. It teaches you about different mediums. There's all kinds of how-to videos. Even if you want to use a camera. I even have a video on how to make this camera slider right here very inexpensively. It's a very little money compared to, you know, the hundreds of dollars that they want for the ones you buy. Um, so you can video them if you want to eventually. Um, there's all kinds of, of uh, videos in there to teach you. My videos tend to be a lot longer than most. You'll see that I have four-part videos, quite a few, and which transcribes into you know a couple of hours or more on one painting. But I made sure that when I did the videos that uh, you had a lot more content to see, and you could see exactly what I was doing. I wasn't skipping big parts and then say okay we're gonna do trees here and just do trees and bam they're all done and they then you're back up on the next thing you get to see me do all of the trees all of the highlights everything the trunks whatever and that's why i did it that way so that because i've seen videos before lots of them myself that i wasn't happy with because people go okay we're gonna do the trees now to do one and bam this 15 other trees there all of a sudden that I didn't see them make or what order they used. You know, most of the trees, you put the back trees further away first. And then as you come forward, you make them a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. That's where you get your dimensions for your painting. I want to make sure that people could see that. How to do water, get reflective water. It's so easy, people don't realize how easy it is to make reflective water. So that's why I made sure my tutorials were a lot longer. There's even a tutorial on a portrait for beginners. And that was actually my granddaughter I did. I think she's called the, uh, the princess or something like that. And uh, I think that's a four-part video also. Now, that one did require, you know, doing a drawing of her, which you can do that very easily by going and uh, if you've got any kind of a Photoshop program or a photo uh, paint shop pro or something like that, go in and grayscale it, print it out on a good quality painting paper and you can paint it with acrylic it's a great way to get started and then paint out the original picture 
And then it's just a matter of learning how to mix the flesh tones in the background, do the background, figure out what you want to use for a background. Portraits, I always recommend you, you at least get some burnt umber, thin it out really thin with water, and paint the whole thing. Even after you've transferred your picture, or you can transfer your picture using carbon paper for that matter. Um, just do the outlines. Make sure you get the eyes, nose, eyebrows, as much detail as you possibly can. And I would even kind of pencil in a little bit of where all your shadows are, the lighter areas and things like that, so that you know about where they are. Details on the ears, the nose, the mouth. When doing portraits, I recommend you try to get a portrait with people maybe smiling but not showing their teeth. Very difficult getting the teeth done, especially for a beginner. But anyway, it's a, it's a good exercise, a good way to get started. If you don't know how to draw, which a lot of people don't, there's nothing wrong with transferring an Im image to whatever you're going to paint it on, whether it's canvas, canvas board, uh, a multimedia paper, whatever the case may be. Use some carbon paper, transfer it. Print it out on paper, and then transfer it. It's not cheating. It's just getting the drawing where you want it to be. The painting is still going to be yours. Because think about it. If you don't paint it right, it's not going to look right. That simple. It's still a painting. As you can see behind me here, this, this is traditional painting, what you see up on the back wall. A little waterfall way over there, which is behind my easel. You can probably hardly see that. That's actually acrylic. But these other ones are all oil. And these were those were all done using acrylic block in, like I was just explaining. And then going over it with oil. There's also wet on wet which I don't think you can see it from here. Right over there, yep. The northern lights, that's basically what I want. That's uh, basically the same one Bob Ross did, but I changed it a little bit so it would be kind of my own. But basically it's the same type of a thing. But as you can see, there is a difference in the amount of detail when you do traditional painting versus what I want. But it looks like we're not going to get anybody in here today, which is which is sad. I was hoping there'd be some beginners out there that would really like to get some some good advice on how to get started. While I'm having my coffee, it's a great time to ask questions. I also offer memberships here. Yes, they're up. Paid memberships at the very minimal. Uh, you can do that uh, after you subscribe. You can look down where the join is. And it starts at uh, $2.99 a month. Then $4.99 and then $9.99. Depending on the level and the benefits you want. You get all kinds of discounts. Um, there's merchandise. There's uh, links down here for my merchandise for shirts and all kinds of other things that you can get. Um I have a super chat. If you want to send in a donation, that's great. It's always appreciated. Helps pay for the canvas and the paint and things like that. Camera equipment, whatnot. And uh, I usually do a live stream every night around 1030. If you subscribe and you click the bell and click the all, you will get a notification. Usually around 930 to 10, I'll put out a notification that there will be a live stream. Rare that I don't do one. Usually it's because of my internet connection, which is horrible. I have Viasat, which is really crappy. 
otherwise, I'll be doing some live painting. And hopefully, we'll get some better internet here soon when it's available. In which time, I will be doing some live painting. But we'll schedule those usually ahead of time so people know. And you have a warning. But anyway, uh, I guess we'll end it here. It's only been a half an hour stream, but hope everybody has a good day and hope you enjoyed this video. And it's been at least inspiring to get you started painting. Uh, join us at our live stream at 1030 at night. We talk about other things. That's why it's called Kim Castor and more. We talk about other things besides painting, but if you want to learn how to paint and you, need, and you have questions, I will answer them if you come into one of the live streams. Doesn't matter what we're talking about. If you want to learn something about painting, come and talk to me. I'll definitely answer your questions. So anyway, on behalf of Kim Casta Art and More, have a great day. Stay healthy. Stay safe. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.